In this clip, we are going to go over the geometry of the valve train and how to determine how long of a push rod you're going to need to get that geometry correct. One option to start with, you can take a straight edge and you're going to draw a line straight from this trunnion to the roller. They're actually both rollers, but what you put on the trunnion you can't go with because that's going to spin around as it's going up and down. Anyway, you can take a sharpie, get yourself a straight edge, draw a line. I'm going to do mine a different way. I'm just going to take a piece of tape. Center of the trunnion to center of the roller at the tip. Now, we have a straight line. We want this line to be 90 degrees of the valve stem. 90 degrees at half lift. Now let's go determine and get this set up for that. This, your uh, lock, let me, hold on. Now here's the uh, lock, we're gonna take that out. We're not going to need that to come get in our way. And we're going to set this. Uh, we'll always remember with this style, this style of roller rocker, flat is always up. You don't want this taper to end up. This is riding against this nut when it's in use. This does not get used down here. So let's go to the engine. We got this off Amazon. Uh, it's made by Proform, part number 66790. Push rod knife checker, small block Chevy, with the 716 studs, which is what we have here. We have 716 studs. But uh we put that on there. And we have already determined what our knife needs to be. And it's not even getting there. If we went down to where it needed us to be, our rocker arm hits on the head stud. So evidently this is no good for this engine. I don't know. Jump. Piece of chit, right Drew? You gotta make you gotta make sure your lifters on the base circle. Once you get down to the bottom, take another corner turn, you're good to go. Now, we took our lock nut out. Let me put that somewhere safe. There is nowhere safe around me, that's for sure. Take your adjustable push rod. That's not adjustable, that's the... <laughs> Dumbass. Once you have your lifter on the base circle of the cam, your adjustable push rod turned in all the way. You can now set that on there. We'll get our nut without the locking bolt. Let's take that out. Put that on there a little bit. Now we need a straight edge. And we want this tape to be 90 degrees. Now we want this 90 degrees with the valve. So since this rocker is so so wide I can't use the same top. We're gonna come over here to the exhaust valve 
we'll rest on that. So now we will too far down. Let me grab a bigger one. Get her on a flat spot. Oh, that's perfect here. Now we will get that. That's where we want it. So now we'll take it down. So we just touch it. I'm touching. Make sure your line is lined up with the valve stem. Too far. Stick that up. I'm sure you can't see I'm lined up with it, but I'm at a different angle. Okay, we're going to go. We're going to go with that. Now, we don't want to move that nut. We're going to mark at 12 o'clock. Bring it loose. Now. Okay, now that we got that set up and ready. We have on the intake valve 597 thousandths lift. Divide that by two, 298.5. Divide that by 50 thousandths. Now, now I'm getting 50, we're not 50 thousandths, but by 50, and you get 5.97. So we're going to turn that five, six turns. 5.97, we're going to call that an even six. We have 716 studs, 20 threads per inch. Each full turn is going to equal 50 thousandths of an inch. So that's how we come up with that formula, 298.5 divided by 2, 5.97 is going to be our six turns on that. So we'll go ahead and take that six turns. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's our six. Now, we'll adjust this rod up. Zero lash. Got a little bit of lash there. No more. And that's going to be, it spins freely, but there's no lash. So we're at zero lash on a solid lifter. If you notice, we are no longer parallel, or I'm sorry, perpendicular to the valve stem. So we want to get this, our reference line of the tape, 90 degrees, perpendicular to the valve stem. So, we'll take this towel, we'll get this at half lift. Well, let me get set up for that. Okay, that is zeroed out, valve is closed. We will take this to Half lift, which was 298. There's 298. Now, I have to use a smaller one now because everything's down lower. And we matched it. We are at 90 degrees to the valve stem. Now that, now you, now you just know, now you know your push rod length. I see on, the, on places, I'll try to get in the center as much as possible. No, 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 don't do that. You want the smallest sweep. Because as this goes down, this thing is sweeping across the top of that valve stem. And if I was to go with, in the center, my sweep was like 120 thousandths of sweep. Uh, it's just way too much. That puts side load on the valve stem as it's going back and forth across the top of this. It's putting side load on, too much side load, which is going to prematurely wear your valve guides out. Don't do that. You want to go for the least amount of sweep possible on the top of that valve stem. 
your goal is 50 thousandths. And if you can't achieve that, you can get away with 60. But if you can't achieve it, you're going to have to, you have two choices. Change the rocker arm manufacturer or go with a longer valve stem. You can get longer valve stems uh, that maintain your spring height. So if you're too far out to the exhaust, you can get a taller valve stem, but still has the keeper at the same location. And that will bring you up and get you into the center a little bit more. Uh, you're going to be out, chances are you're going to be out past halfway. Don't worry about it as long as you're still in the meat. Uh, two thirds out, you're fine. But you do not want to be making a big sweep. Go for that minimum sweep. Uh, we are at 60,000 square sweep, which is no, it's the max we want to do. It's out there toward, but we're still in the meat of it. But it's only going, it's only sweeping 60 thousandths of an inch. But if I was in the center and sweeping 120, that's sweeping 120 thousandths, twice what it would be. And it's going back and forth. Like I said, it's going premature on the valve guides. You don't want that. To check your sweep, use a dry waste marker, not a permanent marker. These test springs don't have enough pressure for that thing to wipe your path with a permanent marker. You put permanent marker on there, you're going to turn it. Permanent marker is still going to be there. You use a dry erase marker, turn it. It's good. That dry erase is weak enough. It'll make your, it'll clean off your little path for you. This. Is the length we want now we already have our head gasket on uh, if we would have checked this before head gasket we know that our head gasket was 39 thousandths of an inch thick compressed so if we were if we were just uh, head to deck no gasket we would add 39 thousandths to our length uh, so you take your length and add uh, we're gonna do a half turn for preload half turn would be 25 thousandths so you're gonna add 25 thousandths for these studs for preload on the lift on the hydraulic lifter. Yeah, I think you can go up to 60, don't quote me on that, I'm not sure, but you want at least 20 thousandths preload on that hydraulic lifter. Now, if you have a solid lifter, no preload, you just keep adjusting your valves on that, and we will add 25 thousandths to the length we have, and that will be what we've got our measurement. Now I bought a, a 12 inch, caliper to measure that rod we measured it he put the order in and here's our here's his new rods these are our cock cams high tech they're 105 thousandths wall thickness uh, the length is 7.450 or there it is 105 inch wall thickness so these are the rods he's going to push rods he's going to be using in this engine now, if you have a bigger lift on the exhaust versus the intake, you're going to want to check both. Now, you want to do this on all four corners if you want to be in on about it. But our exhaust is only uh, six thousandths more, so we're not going to worry about different push rod lengths for the exhaust. The geometry was close enough, it didn't really affect it. I forgot to mention, uh, once you do have your everything lined up, you check that sweep. It's gonna be at the smallest point or all but right there. From that point on, you can go down 50 thousandths to 100 thousandths the most and back the other way, but you're gonna find yourself right in that neighborhood of where you gotta be. Uh, make your small adjustment, crank it around. I would say no more than 50 thousandths. Make a little bit of adjustment, Crack it over two times, three times, four times, whatever you put at your boat. Take it apart, check it uh, for your sweep pattern. Measure it with uh, a caliper. I used a, I didn't use a digital caliper, I used a dial caliper. And you can measure your sweep and just, and done to wipe off brake clean, hit it with the dry erase marker again, check, make another adjustment, check it again. But yet, that's, this method is going to put you right in the ballpark where you got to be.